The fourth and final pattern of electron flow that we're going to discuss is carbocation rearrangement. Before we really look at what this is, we need to spend some time looking at the stability of carbocations. Here I've drawn a series of carbocations. This first one is just a methyl group, CH3 with a cation, so we call that a methyl cation. The others, if you look at the carbocation carbon, which is this carbon in each, and then you look at how many other carbon groups are bonded to it, you can classify it like we've classified other molecules. So a carbon that has one carbon attached is a primary carbon. Well, this is no different. This is a primary carbocation. If the carbon has two carbons attached, this is a secondary carbocation. And if it has three carbons attached, it's a tertiary carbocation. And what we find is that as we go from the methyl to the tertiary, we're increasing in stability. As it's often said for carbocations, stability increases with substitution at the carbocation carbon. We're going to look in a separate video at why this happens. So why does substitution result in enhanced stability? But for now, just keep in mind that substitution increases the carbocation stability. And then what you want to know is that carbocations can and will rearrange to become more stable. There are two main types of carbocation rearrangements. The first is a hydride shift. The second is an alkyl shift. Let's start with the hydride shift. And say we have this carbocation here. So what you want to do is look at your carbocation and classify it. And that is secondary. And then you want to think if you could move it to either adjacent carbon. So look at the carbon that the carbocation is on. The adjacent carbons are the ones right next to that. To think about would that become more stable if it were to move. If it were to move to this position, it would become primary. That's not helpful. But if it moves here, that would be a tertiary cation. So if you have a hydrogen that you can move, that's going to be the preferred method. So basically, if we draw the hydrogen in at the neighbor, what happens in a hydride shift is the two electrons in that CH bond actually move, taking the hydrogen with it. So the electrons come out of this carbon and get plugged into the carbocation carbon. When we draw the resulting product, we now have added that hydrogen here. And since we took the hydrogen out of this carbon, there's now a void there. So we have a positive charge on this carbon. And this is a good thing because now we have a tertiary carbocation. And the ter tertiary carbocation is more stable than the secondary. Think about the positive charge on a carbon as a void, an emptiness of electrons, or kind of a pothole on that carbon. So what you've done is you've taken some gravel from this pothole added it to this one. So that one's now full and happy, but now you've left an emptiness on this carbon. So that's what the carbocation rearrangement is, essentially. So if you have a hydride you can move, that's going to be preferred. If not, we also have the option of an alkyl shift. So now if we take this example, we again have a secondary carbocation. If you move it to the right, that would be primary. And then to the left, we do have a more substituted carbon. 
but you don't have any hydrogen on this carbon to move. So instead of shifting a hydrogen, we can shift an alkyl group. Usually it's going to be a methyl group that we're shifting. We have three methyl groups on that carbon. You can pick any of the three to shift. Move that over to where the carbocation is. When we do, we've added a new carbon right there, but we've left an emptiness on this carbon. But this is preferred because we've gone from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation, and that is a more stable species. One really important thing to keep in mind is that the group that shifts must be on the adjacent carbon to the carbocation. So it must be on the very next carbon over in order for a rearrangement to occur. So if we look at this example right here, and you want to think about shifting it, you might be tempted because we do have a more substituted carbon right here, but you really can only look at the carbons adjacent to the carbocation, meaning we can look here and here. If we shift it to here, we're going to go from secondary to primary. There's no reason to do that. If you shift it to here, you're going to go from secondary to secondary. There's no gain, so no reason to do that. And you can't do kind of a tandem shift where you might go from secondary to secondary and then rearrange to something more stable. If it doesn't rearrange to something more stable in one step, you're not going to do it. Whenever possible, a hydride shift is going to be preferred over a methyl shift, assuming both would give the same degree of substitution in the product. So in the case of this compound here, we have a secondary cation. And if you were to do, um, or if you were to look at both of the adjacent carbons, at the bottom we have a hydrogen that we can shift and do a hydride shift, like that. So if you do that, and in a common abbreviation for hydride shift is the squiggly line followed by the hydrogen. That tells the reader it's a hydride shift. If we do that, We go from the secondary carbocation to the tertiary carbocation. And if you want to draw the hydrogen in here, you can, or you can leave it implied. Now, if you look at the carbon in blue, we don't have any hydrogen on it, but I can do a methyl shift. And here's the abbreviation for a methyl shift. When we do that, I also go from the secondary carbocation to the tertiary carbocation. So in terms of overall stability, both of those are pretty much the same. The shift that is preferred, or easier I guess you could think of, is the hydride shift. So that would be the rearrangement product. One other possible rearrangement that we might see is rearrangement to get a resonant stabilized carbocation. In this starting material, we see a secondary carbocation. And if you were to shift it to here, it would be primary. If you were to shift it to here, it would be secondary. Now usually we don't 
go from one secondary carbocation to another because there's no net gain. But let's take a look at what happens if we do a hydride shift here. So let's draw in a hydrogen, shift it to the carbocation carbon. Right, I'm not going to draw the hydrogen in. We know that it ends up right here. But we end up with a carbocation right here. This is secondary, but it's also allylic because it's next to the double bond. That has resonance stability. And you can even draw the resonance structure. Like that. So what we find is that this rearrangement does occur because what's our goal? Carbocations rearrange to become more stable. The one without resonance is less stable. The one with resonance is more stable. So that's also something to be looking for. Carbocation stability is a result of something called hyperconjugation. In terms of hyperconjugation for stabilizing carbocations, what that is is donation of sigma electrons to an adjacent empty p orbital. So remember that a carbocation is electron deficient and that carbon will have an empty p orbital. So let's start by looking at the methyl cation. So here I have the CH3 group and then I'm going to draw the p orbital on the carbon. That empty p orbital is the result of having the positive charge there. And in the case of this, there's really nothing donating to that p orbital to help stabilize it. But now if I go from the methyl cation to a primary cation, we have this structure where now the carbocation is bonded to a carbon and this carbon has sigma bonds on it. So what basically happens is the sigma bond in the CH here, that aligns with the p orbital, and those electrons are donated into that empty p orbital, helping to stabilize it. And as you increase the number of substituents, the number of carbon groups around the carbocation, you're increasing the amount of hyperconjugation and causing it to become increasingly stable. So always just keep that in mind. Increasing substitution means increasing hyperconjugation, increasing carbocation stability.